a where is the consumer? Let's bring in Michelle Schneider, who's betting on names tied to consumer demand and in the beauty sector. But you got to be nimble, I imagine, because this is not a rising tide situation. Exactly. And and as we left off on the last segment talking about the consumer, ultimately, with everything that's going on that seems so positive, the consumer is still really basically, I think, stuck in the middle in terms of where they're at. Staples buying is still very strong. And we've seen Costco and Walmart, Target, TJ Maxx, those stores still doing pretty well and those earnings will be coming up. Macy's has done well, surprisingly. But then you have other types of chains, like you just mentioned, you know, Nike also being included in that, mm. that have really suffered. And then even from even in the staples, you have some of the drugstores chains like Walgreens that closed 1,200 stores. So the question is, where is the consumer going to go? I mean, that's really what matters at this point. And I like to blend the fundamental story with the technical picture, because I find that when those two gel, then you really have a much clearer idea of where to go with your money. So again, looking at ETFs, XRT would be my go-to because it's a nice combination of both consumer staples and consumer discretionary. So you really get that kind of divide right there looking at that chart. And if you look at that chart, what you'll see is that over the last 10 months, which is extraordinary, by the way, you rarely see this, you've had a trading range between really a $10 trading range. Let's just call it that without putting numbers on, which tells me right now it's sort of in the middle, but it's kind of fluctuating more to the higher side, obviously with optimism from everything we just talked about in the other areas of the market. So the consumer is going to look for lower interest rates. We've had the yields go up, but that looks like that might be reversing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, what the bank earnings is telling you is people are making money in the market. So that's a good thing. They're not as stressed out as many would think. But of course, that's where you're looking economic strata wise. You know, you have a real big divide between the wealthiest and obviously the poorest. And then I think if we start to see that area of that trading range break out, just like we talked with KRE, to the upside, it would behoove you to follow that in faith. But like you said, be nimble because we know inflation can pick up and everything can turn around because we have so many risks around us. And I think that's why the consumer isn't flying here. They're worried. So if, where do you play that? What's a, what's a perfect day? encapsulation of, of nailing that, uh, that idea and dealing with those risks? Well, again, if you want to have exposure to a lot of different companies with that blend of discretionary and staples, I like that ETF XRT. It's a solid mm -hmm. ETF. It's got a lot of volume and a lot of liquidity, so it's not thin. If you want to look at sort of the individual plays, we talked about some of those big chain stores like, like Target, which looks pretty ripe to possibly go higher. I like that one of the bunch because the others have already made big moves. But also, there's an area that I'm really watching carefully as you mentioned before, which is what happens as a result of these obesity drugs that not only now they're saying are great for getting people to lose weight and keep weight off, but also is having other benefits like reducing diabetes and heart disease. And as this new realm of consumer comes into the market, uh, especially if economic conditions stay okay and things don't get too nuts, especially interest rate wise or inflation, then I think a lot of these stocks that have been beat up in the beauty space might start to turn around. Because, you know, if you start to get thinner and feel better about <laughs> yourself, then there are certain things you want to do. You want to start getting your hair nicer. You want to maybe do some work on your face, wear more makeup, wear nicer clothes, go out more. And so that's why I see you put up Alter Beauty. That's one that we've been tracking very carefully. Besides the fact that we know that Warren Buffett has been a huge investor in it down at the, around these levels. It does look like it based out in August. There was a nice big crash and it's come up through that. We're looking though, it needs to do a little bit more work here. I, uh, it's been down 25% over the year, but the projections for the numbers going forward are pretty solid. They're still looking profitable. And if we start to see a move over, let's say 380 in that stock, I would think that the worst is over. So that's kind of what we're tracking there as sort of the symbol of everything we just talked about with vanity. OK, good perspective. Before I let you go, I'd love to get your two cents on kind of the tech trade, the ASML unwind. This is a maker of chip making machinery. 
So when it's warning about profit, the whole industry was sort of on watch, even as they said, it's not about AI, it's kind of everything else. The fact that we saw NVIDIA, AMD, you know, Palantir, the AI trade come off. What does that tell you? Are you, are you dipping your toe in here? No, not yet. Uh, we, I mean, we do have some NVIDIA, and so we've taken profit, uh, which was a good thing. But really, basically, uh, exactly what we're talking about is that in terms of cycles, growth has been the thing, and especially in the chip area, for quite some time now. So the fact that things got too frothy and the expectations really ran ahead of themselves, ASML was sort of like the wake-up call that not everything goes up forever. Does that mean the industry's over? Of course not. Would there be a point where we would look at? But right now it feels more falling knife, and as we mentioned throughout our conversations this morning, there are other areas that look a little bit more interesting. So yeah, and then there was other further news with Intel in China talking about security breaches using Intel chips. So as you start to hear these stories, it is possible that we don't want to see the semiconductor space fall apart. Obviously, that would affect everything, but it doesn't necessarily have to lead. And in some cases, that would actually be healthier for the overall economy if the rally broadens out. All right. It is the great debate that is raging on right now. Thanks so much to Michelle Schneider for joining us with that perspective.